Well, hello, slower travelers. Today we are in Segovia in central Spain. And this is a very historic town. The entire town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which just is, thrills me to no end. To get to Segovia from Madrid, it's very simple. You either take a bus, which I believe takes about an hour and a half, or you take the train like we did, and it takes about a half an hour, and that was a really good way to go. The train station is not close to the town, so you do have to take uh, either a bus from there or a taxi, which we opted for, and that'll cost you about 10 euros. Here is a travel tip for our older travelers. In Madrid, uh, and you can purchase, actually you could purchase it anywhere in Spain on the Renfe system, R-E-N-F-E, which is their major train uh, system. If you are 60 years old or older, you get an elder pass. It's called a Tarjeta Dorado. And you can get them at subway stations anyway, anywhere, and they only cost six euros each and they're good for a year. And with that, you can get 25% up to 40%, sometimes even more discount on the train tickets because you're given a number uh, on your card with that they give you after you pay for it and then you just enter that when you buy your tickets online and uh, easy peasy. It, it makes it very affordable. So we're just happy at, ha as clams. We're going to be here for a couple of days and every video that I've seen in every guidebook Tanya says that there are uh, four things that you should do when you're in Segovia. So we're going to do those things. Number one is you have to look at the aqueduct. Number two, you have to go to the Alcazar. Number three, you have to see the cathedral. And four, you have to have suckling pig. So we <laughs> made a reservation for tomorrow for some suckling pig. So we're really looking forward to that. Let me show you the, the first item here. And yes, indeed, we're going to see it. This is the Roman aqueduct and this is truly amazing construction started on this in 50 AD and uh, it's unique in its construction in that there is absolutely no mortar used in any of the joints and I'll show you a little bit closer here I want to show you the uh, holes in all of these stones these were used uh, by these tongs, these sort of uh, pincher tongs, and they used a uh, pulley system to lift these big blocks one on top of another. And it was just unbelievable. And, it, and it, I don't know if you can see here, there is, there's no mortar in between here. They just put these blocks on top of each other. And they have been here for 2,000 years. And it's, it's as if it was done last week. The aqueduct is one of the best preserved of any of the remaining Roman aqueducts. There are two tiers to this thing and it was used up until about a hundred years ago uh, for actually transporting water. So that is um, pretty, pretty amazing. It's amazing. Outside the Alcazar or palace here in Segovia and it is said that Walt Disney uh, modeled some of his the famous uh, Walt Disney logo after this uh, uh, palace here uh, we don't know if that's necessarily true or not we're going to be going in here the uh, it was uh, expanded in the 14th century uh, remodeled in the 15th this is from Fodor's guide uh, was completely reconstructed after being gutted by fire in 1862 when it was used as an artillery school. Isabel was a Catholic, Isabella, and uh, she was crowned Queen of Castile here. And at that time, 
the whole town of Segovia was about 60,000 people, which is about what it is now. It's about 52,000. Okay, so we're going to go into the Alcazar. It, it apparently is beautiful. There's a throne room. There's a lot of uh, uh, beautiful fixtures inside. Uh, and of course, it's all part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, so we can't miss it. Let's go see. Tanya brought up an excellent point that because this was all reconstructed in the late 1800s, uh, this whole palace, the Alcazar, looks kind of artificial. Uh, kind of almost looks like it was just reproduced here to, so we could see what it was, which of course is what reproductions are. But you know, it's better than nothing and it certainly gives you an idea of of uh, what it was like at that particular time in history with Isabel and Isabella, excuse me, and uh, and Ferdinand, who, as you probably remember, were the ones that gave Col Christopher Columbus the dough and the ships to make his voyage. We're leaving the Alcazar, but we didn't want to leave without a picture of the famous, or famous in our own minds, moat, which surrounds the Alcazar. It is really quite a ways down here. But apparently, and I learned this from another YouTube video, uh, that this moat was not filled with water because if it was filled with water, apparently it would make it even easier for the enemy to siege the palace. So what it was, there, there were a couple of bears that were down there because one of the kings really liked exotic animals. And uh, I suppose if you made it this far, uh, you know, a bear could eat you. So that's another, uh, discouragement to trying to reach the power. Well, we've made it to the one of the big highlights of Segovia and that is the cathedral which was finished in about 1571 and it is huge and we've uh, we took some photos inside but it's just a massive undertaking and uh, it's we've checked our boxes of one of the things we've got to see in Segovia. So now we have, uh, you know, like a day left. So we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with ourselves. Oh, I know there's always things you can do. You just keep wandering around and seeing people. And, you know, I, I'm always chatting with the lovely Tanya and we're sharing experiences and perceptions of things we've seen. Yes. Yes, she agrees. One of our earlier videos on this trip, I noted how we had, hadn't seen any of these crowds that everybody was talking about that were just inundating Europe. Well, 
uh, that didn't last very long. That was, of course, true maybe in the Pyrenees, but here it is just chock-a-block with tour groups and their guides. Uh, here's one of the guides with the ubiquitous uh, umbrella to guide his group, and you just have to, I think they come in buses from Spain, uh, or maybe there's... Madrid, you mean? Uh, excuse me, from Madrid, yes, of course we're in Spain. So uh, at least at this point, we're just trying to maneuver our way around them. I, I should also mention that in Madrid, where we just were the last couple of nights, it was also just packed with people and groups. we're groups, groups of, of people and students and you know I think university is out now and so that's what they're doing look at here's another huge group of them well we had made a reservation at this restaurant Jose Maria for tomorrow but we stopped by and they had an opening and so we came in so we've ordered the famous suckling pig the uh, the beans which are going to be coming shortly and of course some of their their famous red wine so this is going to be just just a fabulous meal and we're looking forward to the the suckling pig they started out with uh, just giving us a small uh, hunk of bread here so it's uh, you know you can gnaw on that until uh, anything else comes and this is just the first course this is the uh, where we're only having I guess three courses we're going to have these uh, beans with uh, looks like a little chorizo in there, doesn't it, Tiny? It does, and some ham. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, really good. So we're going to start off with this. So, Tanya, what what do you think of this soup? I think it's fantastic. I think the broth is rich and savory. The beans are beautiful and creamy. I had a little sausage. We have some, uh, looks like bacon and pork, yeah. and it's luckily it wasn't a huge portion, yeah. but it is going to be filling it is. because I like soup. To call it soup is almost, uh, it's almost more like a stew, stew. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. or just beans with some... Like a cassoulet. Yeah, like a cassoulet. Mm -hmm. that we're dining at about 5.45 in the afternoon, which is unheard of for Spaniards. Normally, these things don't open, restaurants don't open until like 8 o'clock. But this is their, what they call their special spring menu, which goes till 4 until, uh, oh, here comes the little pig. Oh my All God. right. So we have finished our suckling pig dinner, complete with bean soup and dessert, and a, a bottle of the beautiful local red wine here, which is... Wait, Tanya, what is your assessment of tonight's dinner and kind of suckling pig in general? Well, first of all, I'm still kind of embarrassed to eat a suckling pig because it just seems wrong. Because it's so young? It, yeah, it's so young and it just seems wrong. wrong. But I understand that this particular restaurant, they raise their own suckling pigs. And so they just, they, and I, they go through, I think, 65 of them a day or something like that. It gets worse, Jim. Stop. It gets okay. <laughs> It's getting worse. Okay. Okay, okay quit while well, I'm behind. <laughs> Um, so it's the kind of thing where you have to just, it was fine, I'm so glad we did it. We had a quarter of the pig, they said, that I think it was less. And the skin was nice and crackling and it tasted good. But, you know, just pork is kind of boring. Pork is kind of boring, but pork chops are okay. Yeah. How about I mean, this pork fell off the bone. The bone, and yeah. it was lovely yeah. and stuff. Like that. How about pork ribs? Yeah. Not Me, quite sure. Yeah. It's just... So I think I what would, Tanya is telling us is that uh, that um, we probably won't have suckling pig again for quite a while. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's kind of a thing you have to do when you're in Segovia because it's famous for that. And it's like, you know, Austria is famous for Wiener Schnitzel and so forth. But, I think I like the balanced meal with vegetables uh -huh. and vegetables and uh -huh. protein. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. That's it for tonight from Home Economist uh, Tanya on her final gla glass of wine. <laughs> wow, whoa. <laughs> well, this is our final evening in Segovia. And as we close out uh, today's video, I want to re remind you of four important tips for older travelers. A couple of these I've mentioned before. Number one. When having lunch, going to a restaurant, go for the Plata del Dia, the, the daily plate, and order either a one or two course uh, dish, and you'll save a lot of money by doing it that way rather than just ordering off the menu. Number two, find a local grocery store, like a Car for Express or a Spa or something like that, and you can get uh, you know, pre-made salads there just like you can in the United States. You'll save yourself a lot of dough by doing it that way. Number three, be sure and get the, if you're traveling by train at all, be sure and get the uh, senior citizen pass. If you're 60 years or older, you just go to any train station, any metro station, go to their uh, ticket desk or ask somebody where you can get that. The Tarjeta Dorado, and for six euros, good for a year each, uh, your next trip, you'll, you'll save way more than that. You'll get some really incredible discounts on train travel. And the third, or the fourth um, uh, reminder for you to save money is be sure to ask for senior discounts when you're at museums, uh, any kind of attraction. Usually, they'll recognize that you're older and uh, they'll say, oh, senior, and uh, uh, there you'll go. But uh, sometimes they won't. So just make sure you be sure and tell them, you know, oh, uh, dos uh, seniors. And oh, yes, of course. And uh, you'll get that discount. You can save a lot of money that way. Okay, so that's it from beautiful Segovia, Spain. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in our next video where we will be heading off to Burgos. Burgos, Spain, and we've got some really interesting things to see there. Bye-bye.